I'm Denshi. I've been sorting out through these drawings and documents and files today, and I thought I would make a fun video if I ran through them. Now, they're all sorted chronologically, so this might take a while, so just in case the video is really long, that's, that's why. I'm going to start with this pile, which is mostly stuff from, I think, fourth or fifth grade, uh, mostly fourth. And this first one is this pair of glasses that we did in class, and it's meant to be the two worlds you live in, like the left eye and the right eye, and they contain two different worlds. The reason I'm covering the left one is because uh, there's this monitor over here, and this is actually an airport, and um, here it has all my relatives' names on it, so I'm covering it up. But essentially, this is a standby screen. If you don't know what that is, when you're traveling by staff, you have a status every time you book a flight with staff travel. And most of the time when you book it, you get a yellow standby, and then you have to go to the airport and they have a little screen that shows you your status, whether you're standby, denied, or confirmed. And this is such like a, a common occur occurrence uh, when I was a kid that I, I made my drawing about it and I, I drew a plane, triple seven, going somewhere. So yeah, this is just my first little thing. Moving on, there's a few other things here. Let's see, there's uh, this Minecraft thing. I'm not quite sure what it is. It has my name on it and has my sprite at the time that I made. And I'm not quite sure what's going on. If he's mining underwater, I'm not sure. And here's a little green and blue diamond and some diamonds and a shark apparently, which aren't even in Minecraft. Oh, definitely were not when this came out. I don't know what they put in Minecraft now. So yeah, nothing in the back. Then we got, ooh, my favorite, Big Nate. Now, uh, when I was a kid, I loved Big Nate. It was my favorite thing ever. Um, it's basically this comic strip that has a story to it. So you could go and watch the comic. Like the comic was published in newspapers, but every single week the comic story continued. So it wasn't this, you know, ephemeral like, oh, the comic exists on the newspaper and it's just one joke and then it's over. No, you actually had a continuous story. So what the author did was he combined this story of all the comics into big books. And these are called, you know, the Big Nate books. This one's called In the Zone. I'm not quite sure what this one was about because I don't remember, but I do remember making this, you know, definitely making this cover. <laughs> yeah, Big Nate's gonna make you laugh big time. Yeah, by Lincoln Pierce. Really, really good comic artist, by the way, if you ever read this as a kid. But I also like Diary of a Wimpy Kid, of course, because like every kid my age read that. And um, I wrote a little essay about it here for school. Pretty interesting. Um, Kissing area. I don't know what that means. A rising area. Sorry. I, I interpreted that as a... Hmm. Anyways, here we have some like short stories. This is a fable that we had to write in class. I remember they would make us like write fables and things to get us understand different formats in English. Um, let's see. I wrote this one. This is actually... You're meant to have a moral in the fable, right? Now, I did a pretty bad job because fables are meant to be short, but I wrote a really long one. And the moral in this one's written in Latin, actually, carpe diem. And I wrote this one because when I asked my parents, like, what moral should I write my uh, um, fable about? Because I was really stuck on this project. Um, I had thought of a few myself, but I didn't think of anything worthwhile. So I, rem I remembered what my dad used to tell me all the time. And he would often share morals and, like, message, like the kind of proverbs in latin that would be said and so i wrote that down in my english lesson funnily enough but yeah and, and also i'm surprised that my handwriting on this is better than like my handwriting now so just you know fourth grade me really had it down you know anyways here's vincent van gogh um what am i vincent van going to do with this um he shot himself in a wheat field in france he he was this basically this project that we did at school. I don't really remember doing this that much. Uh, I did. I do have this other thing, this uh, Starry Night thing they made us do for Vincent Van Gogh. I'm not sure why they made us study, probably for art history or something. But I, I don't remember much about this. I, I don't. I don't understand how I could have done such a bad job because it's such a messy piece of work. I mean, what, what is this? I don't. I don't think I ever gave this to the teacher. Then there's some like short stories they had to write. You have to create like character descriptions. And one really weird thing about my teacher. Um, is she would mark bad things in green. So here, I wrote personality. I wrote his personality is making and then, uh, what does that mean? Uh, I'm not sure. Then, uh, I don't know. Assembling machines that can boost his productivity. I don't know, something like that. And personality is underlined in green. Now, green is actually bad. Green, and, and she says, is personality the right word for, the, for this sentence? And obviously it's not. Uh, you could say like his passion. But still, green was the bad color in my classroom. Pink was the good color. You know, that, that, that got you ticks and stuff. So it was really, really, really funny. 
And they got these like weird stories where they would give us the mystical, the mystical tree, and then we had to write a story about it, like you know, describe the setting. I'm sure if you've gone like to primary school, you've probably done it. And there's our first of many hidden little Doraemons. When I was a kid, now I didn't like anime when I grew up, but when I was like in fourth grade, I really liked watching this on Italian television because we still had it, and um, I really love that cartoon. So there's a few things like that in it. This next, this next thing I'm about to show you is probably my favorite in the whole pile. How to be safe on the internet. And look, guys, I know you're watching this video. You love privacy, security, you know, whatever. Listen to me, because this is an important fourth grade me knew what was up, you know. So how to be safe on the internet, according to fourth grade me. Rules. Do. Try to not cyberbully. Try. You know, try. Try your best. Don't. Download unknown files, folders of any kind, apps, etc. Okay, yeah, that's reasonable. Can't really download... Uh, a folder as a single file, but I guess, you know, FTP, I was thinking forward. Don't get any Twitter, Facebook, or Tumblr until you're 14. Now, I, you know, what is it? 10-year-old me knew what was up. Now, just to be clear, I don't know why I put Tumblr here. It was the only thing I could think of because I, I had heard the word Tumblr before probably, and I thought, ah, it's probably some other social media. It is, but I didn't know how bad it would have been compared to Twitter and Facebook. Do. As soon as some advert post or unknown window appears, close or shut off the computer and tell the teacher that teach her. Yeah, that's, that's, you know, that's what they would tell us to do in class because they were really scared of us going on like Internet Explorer and I don't know, some really bad advert or some really bad thing would pop up. And so they would tell us to just inform a teacher if anything happened. We were like nine at the time. Um, don't. Show other people your details because they might hack your account. I mean, look, I'm looking forward. No doxing, no stealing passwords either. You know, I'm, I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Okay. Let me got some like biology stuff here. Um, adaptation, uh, life cycle of a plant. I think I must have done this maybe in fifth grade because I don't remember doing this in, in fourth grade. But yeah, I did a few drawings for that. Uh, they, they make you do this thing. I don't know. They, they are obsessed with this in, in schools. They always make you write fake stories for newspapers to get you to do journalistic writing. And once again, my handwriting here is better than like my modern handwriting. So props to like nine-year-old me or 10-year-old me or whatever. Then we got this beautiful piece of Doraemon fan art. Uh, we got uh, Denshi written in Japanese over here. I've been using that name for a while, by the way. I know you guys think that it's some like random internet thing. No, I, us I used it when I was like nine years old, you know. And there's my name on it. And I don't think I dated this, so that's that. Although I know that it was made around 2015 because here's the Expo 2015 logo. I thought it was a really neat logo, so I drew it here. Anyways, there's that. Then there's this like motorcycle I found that I made and then some random drawing that has half of Denshi written without the S, H, and I. I remember making this. I specifically remember making this drawing and never finishing it. So I always love drawing cityscapes like that. Anyways, enough of that. Now let's move on to a new era of drawings. Here's what I started making more comics and stuff. I had already been making comics since I was around eight, but I never, I never saved those. I never, you know, I never, I was never able to find them again. So here's my um, Dave's Adventure comics, and there's a few other ones that I did, that I did. There's like this is like a character sheet of characters. That's a really scary guy. Um, that was like a character sheet, and then what else do I have? Yeah. These like Dave comics. So Dave was like this character that I had with this flower on his head. It's kind of where I got the design for Denshi with the line eyes or whatever. This is really like generic design for a classroom. Uh, not for a classroom. What am I saying? Uh, for, for a character. And um, the, the concept with him was he was bullied really hard at school because of this like protrusion from his head, like this like tumor. And so he gets revenge by committing acts of terrorism, you know, by putting dynamite in people's toilets. So... Yeah, I was a pretty, pretty violent kid, but whatever. It, I had a lot of um, stories about him going around and whatever, and I remember making these comics and, and, you know, having a lot of fun. So, yep, let's see. And more comics that I made, these are more like science fiction, and this is where I start getting into my science fiction sort of era of making comics and drawings. Here are some random, like, logos that I would do. I, I really liked logos around the time. This must have been 2016, 2017, 2018, around that kind of time. I love logos, and you know, I also really like Sonic, and, I, and this is because I played the classic Sonic games, the mobile ports, and they were really, really good. So there's that. 
this is like some scientific drawing that I used to do. I really enjoyed science diagrams as a kid. I love the intricacy and like drawing everything, trying to get 3D stuff drawn. I really, really enjoyed. And of course, you got the, the Denshi, little Denshi logo there. Uh, yeah, then, then also I loved, linking back to that science fiction sort of love I had, I loved Portal. Portal was my entire life. And I love doing diagrams of Portal. And here's um, Wheatley. Um, and or like the, the cores from Portal and I had all these intricate diagrams. I love that kind of drawing stuff. Yeah. Then moving on from there, I remember this specific moment. This must have been seventh grade or maybe at most eighth grade where me and my friends were like, it would be really cool if we develop a game. We never even started programming anything. We just wanted to like do the drawings and concepts and whatever. So we draw maps and we would come up with like game concepts and we do these like developer notes draw more maps and whatever and this is one of my friends actually i didn't draw this this is my friend's collection of various different um like characters and and little beings that could be in the game like enemies it was really really fun to do yeah i never really took it any further maybe when i grow up i don't know maybe i might do more more of this but i'm not sure game development always seemed to me like something that would have to like it's it's so much effort for something that at the end of the day really does not reward you for the effort that you put in so yeah anyways moving on from that we also got my music this is actually i believe not this but this this is this is the first song i ever wrote in my life it was it's really really generic it's nothing advanced about it really repetitive um, and I still have it somewhere saved on my computer, so I'll get it out at some point if I ever want to make like a cover or a new version. But I remember this fondly because I print, I got, the, I made the MIDI in like a, a a program where you could place notes, and then I exported it as a PDF. And I remember printing this out. This is the second song I ever made. This one actually had lyrics, so the first song I made with lyrics, although I never sung it. So, yeah, those are the first two songs I made in in, in like text form, and I always kept them. So this was around the time I was thirteen. Must have been, yeah, must have been like eighth grade about that time. Yeah, eighth grade. So moving on, there's some more little drawings that I made as I got older. You know, these little characters and stuff. There's um, more characters, kind of more like the modern style that I do. Not that I draw much, but more modern style that I do. And if you've seen the Back to World of Denshi, then a few of these drawings I think are in there. Uh, World of Denshi is one of the albums I do for my band, so there's like a, a back cover with a bunch of drawings. I think from these, from I think, I think it might be this scan might have a few of them, although I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, speaking of World of Denshi and my band, after these drawings, I did start to draw more. Now, interestingly, this drawing was not done by me. This was done by my sister. I think she made it when she was around, uh, I'd like to say nine. Uh, or eight, I can't, I can't remember because it's been a while, but I kept it. I thought it was really, really pretty, and I ended up using it for the cover to Wreck of the Zanzibar, which is the first album I released under the Sabadia band, which is where I make my music now. If you've seen like the videos I've uploaded to my channel about that, oh, and sorry about my finger, I, I've, I've like banged it and I got a really bad bruise, so sorry if that's really ugly. Um, here's the actual original Orionis Red cover from my band album. Now, funnily enough, I made this drawing a long time before I made the album and before I even made this album or any music at all. I had drawn this a long time and I had the idea for the name a long time ago. I just never really did anything with it. Um, at the back, there's actually some like people that I knew and like caricatures, but that was not included in the, in the drawing, of course, and you can't really see it in the back. But yeah, this is the original Orionis Red Dark drawing that I used in the album. I kind of messed up my words there. And it's really, really small as you can see. It's, you know, it's a small little drawing. Anyways, because you'd expect it to be bigger because in the scans, they look really, really big on the album cover, but it's actually really tiny. And there's some more drawings. These are some notes and things for songs and uh, calculus, I guess, at the back. Uh, and some more Orionist red ideas. This is, I wanted to do some um, Ivan Seal. Was it Ivan Seal? I forgot what the name of the artist was, but the artist who made those weird like shapes that made no sense and looked like books but didn't look like books, those like dementia shapes. I wanted to do something like that, but in drawing form for Orionis Red. And I ended up thinking of like a pot with a head on it, and that slowly developed into this, basically. That's the process of getting in there. I also really liked Hawaii Part 2 at the time, as pretty much every like 14, 15, 16 year old does. And uh, I drew a lot of art for that, and Simon, that's a character from that. Yeah. Um, then we're basically reaching the end. Uh, oh wait, I, I lost this. This is an Aperture Science drawing I did. 
like a little thing. Here we reach the, if you've seen the, the music video for Grow Up, which is on this channel, this is the, the paper from it. These are the actual drawings I used to make it. I, I, I scanned all of these and clipped them and turned them into the video. And yeah, they're, they're still all here if you ever want, you know, if I ever want to see them again in, in person. So this is where I get all of them from. Then, uh, the only ones that I've lost, though, are the ones from the beginning of the album. I actually threw those away by accident, so I'm really, I really, I'm sorry that I did that, but, I mean, it is what it is. Here, there's a last drawing I remember making in this collection, which is this Gap t-shirt design competition. I don't know why I did this. Um, I just found this in a store, and I thought, hey, I should draw, like, a little album-like cover thing. I was experimenting with names for my next album at the time. I didn't know what to do, so I named this one My Little Creek, and I drew, like, a little creek and these flowers. And I wrote my name and my age, which was 17 at the time. It felt kind of silly because age was like, you know, kids are meant to do this. But I did it anyways. But yeah, that was my collection of drawings and things that I wanted to showcase in this video. There are probably a few things that I missed out. Um, I can think of some newer drawings that I've made, but they're not really super important. Uh, but yeah, everything from little <laughs> internet safety cards that you guys should listen to, you know, listen to these, these rules, to you know, drawings that turn into album covers. So thank you very much for watching this video. I've been Denshi. Goodbye.